All right, so welcome everybody to the third edition of Tech Uncovered series. My name is Jan and I'm the community manager at News. So in the previous two editions, we covered topics on scaling tech teams and management of teams on home offices. So I'm happy that also this time we'll look at a topic that is very crucial for all the companies around the world and it's connecting developers and product. Uh, we're recording this session so you'll find it soon on YouTube along with the previous two ones. So make sure you check it out if you, if you, um, if you want to see it again. And I'm actually happy and it's great that even in these times that are unsupportive for meetups, conferences and networking, we're still meeting even in this way and that we still bring together uh, people from inspirational companies to tell us what's going on behind the scenes. So it, I'm very happy uh, to introduce our today's host, Lukáš Putna, uh, CTO of Heureka, and I want to thank him for agreeing to join us uh, and leading to today's panel. But before I give floor to Lukáš uh, and our panelists, I would like to ask your, our audience, where are you guys from or where are you watching us? Uh, where are you right now? So uh, just go to Slido um, and use the code for today, Tech Uncovered and please vote for us so that we see uh, where we have the audience from. And this Slido with this uh, code, please use also for asking our panelists any questions that come to your mind. So let's see if we have somebody outside of Czech Republic this time. All right, looks like it's heating up slowly uh, today. So hopefully uh, we'll see more people coming as we go over to Lukáš. Oh, here you go. All right, thank you, Alex, for letting us know. Uh, we'll, we'll look at it and we'll try to fix it ASAP. All right, we'll try to... Uh, let, let it known to, to all the people that have registered to us. But without further ado, I would like to give floor to Lukash and uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Gonza, for a um, brief introduction and welcome, everyone. Uh, it's an honor for me to host such a discussion with uh, professionals uh, of, like we have today here. Uh, again, welcome, everyone. Now I'd like to briefly introduce them to you. Uh, firstly, it's Marian Kamenčák. He's a VP of Engineering at Muse, Property Management Software. Hi, Marian. Hey, guys. Uh, then it's Dominic Vesely, CTO and co-founder of Eki Mobile and Web App Studio. Welcome, Dominic. Hello, welcome. And last but not least, and last, sorry, I'm too fast. And last but not least, it's Michal Lichko, uh, <coughs> director of uh, engineering at Product Board and the product management software. Uh, good to see you again, Michael. Uh, we've worked together in previous companies, so hi. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Okay, let's go. Uh, the topic is connecting devs and product. So tell me guys, how did you get into this panel? Why is this topic important for you personally and how? Marianne, could you start please? I think you need to unmute. Okay, Marianne, now. I guess, I guess we, are, we are good now. Yeah, yeah thanks good. for that. Um, so to me, this topic is sort of crucial because, uh, you know, um, as a junior engineering manager, I was thinking about always all the time to look for the, the right metrics, right? Which is uh, usually comes down to, you know, it very well, the lead time, the throughput and all the Jira ticketing system and processes. But uh, uh, from my experience, I can say that there is more important things which we can achieve here uh, throughout the cooperation with uh, uh, product management and engineers specifically. And uh, that's about to create basically the, the synergy, for example, between the product manager and uh, the tech lead. Uh, with with uh, this synergy, you can, for example, you know, um, 
uh, increase the uh, outcome, for example, of the features by, by I would say, uh, the factor of three to four when you make things work properly. And that's exactly what uh, is much better to look for as opposed to just, uh, you know, your, your metrics or your, your internal processes, et cetera. So that's exactly, again, uh, the reason why I'm here to talk about it. Lukas, you have to Sorry, unmute I was yourself. <laughs> yeah, the, the problem is I can't unmute myself uh, using the Zoom. It, it told me that you need to unmute myself. And anyway, uh, thank you, Marianne, for a brief introduction. Uh, Dominic, would you like to continue? Uh, why, personally, you are here? What does it mean to you? Yeah, uh, to me, uh, it means uh, <laughs> a lot because as a CTO at the, the agency, well, I'm, I'm here like a counterpart uh, to the guys from the product world because uh, we as agency, we do not have uh, on our products or sometimes we do, but we mostly work with the clients and it's, uh, it's a bit different. So I'm here to bring another, uh, another point of view on this topic because uh, sometimes it's really crucial for us to uh, communicate uh, with the client as he is not uh, in our team permanently and uh, we need to deliver the message through the project managers to the developers and everyone working together and satisfy the client so it's uh it's what i do mostly not only as um, architecting these the solutions but also bringing client our product slash project manager team teams and the developers so that's uh, that's why i'm here Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, Michael? Okay, so I saw the collaboration in between PM and EM, like uh, either working or non-working from uh, many angles, many times in different companies. And I must say that uh, nothing great ever came up from the uh, malfunctioning collaboration. So uh, it doesn't really matter if the, the organization is product-led or business-led or tech-driven. There is usually one side that is kind of like uh, above the other. And you don't want to really miss the important information just because you're like uh, uh, on, on the higher rank and you, you have a, a bigger bigger ability to, to actually uh, make your priorities happen. So yeah, um, it's crucial that both sides understand the needs and, and the priorities of counterpart and every voice is heard and considered and prioritized. So that's why I'm here and I want to talk about it today. Okay, great, thank you very much. Uh, obviously, we have three different companies here, uh, one with an internal development, uh, one is delivering to external clients, and one is developing a product management software. Michael, so you should be like a role model here, <laughs> uh, right? But <laughs> don't get stressed. Uh, so I'm asking you, uh, you kind of mentioned this uh, at the beginning, but why is this topic important for your company? And the question is, does it even matter? What are the values that does it bring to you? Uh, Marianne, you can start. Yeah, you're muted because I, you can't unmute yourself. I can see that. Okay, I guess now I'm good. Um, so uh, once again, in context of uh, of Muse as a company, exactly as you mentioned, we are we are delivering a hospitality solution, which is basically a SaaS service. And uh, uh, internally, like uh, with uh, the development teams, we are we came at a stage where the, the all the engineers and the teams are are working pretty well. Uh, nevertheless. Uh, uh, as I said previously, there is much more to achieve if you step outside of your engineering bubble and start to think about how to better um, support the cooperation between the product manager and the, and the developers. And uh, uh, I don't want to go too much into details. <laughs> I guess we are going to cover that uh, later on, but that's exactly the, the, the principle which I'd like to follow. Yeah, okay, thank you. The keyword is cooperation. I've heard that. Uh, Michael, would you like to continue? 
Yeah, okay. So uh, many times we see that it's very easy for a PM to, to beat the developer into death with arguments because uh, those people are uh, usually uh, uh, very good in, 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 uh, in talking, in, in argumenting, but when you're a rapidly scaling company, uh, it's very easy to step off the path and uh, miss some technical detail and you might uh, uh, wake up one day in the morning and realize that uh, you cannot scale and go up market anymore because you're blocked by some technical prerequisites or uh, I don't know, performance or architecture. So the collaboration is really cu crucial to, 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 to keep us on the track towards our business goals. Okay, okay. Uh, Dominic? Yeah, um, well, for us, uh, as we are the agency, uh, we sometimes have uh, some budget or time limitations, or sometimes we even we uh, have to solve the utilization issues as we are working on multiple projects at once. And uh, therefore the communication between uh, the project uh, managers and the developer or the product managers and the developers is crucial because we do need to uh, balance all those uh, agency uh, related things. And of course, since, as I mentioned previously, as the client is uh, not always with us 100% um, and we are having regular statuses and everything, but still he's not there. He's not part of the team. So we really need to uh, bring the team together uh, to, to that there is no another miscommunication because there's already uh, as the bridge between the company, uh, two companies, there's some uh there's already some kind of place where the information can be uh missed or unheard or uh changed uh so if the com so we need to mitigate those issues on our side so therefore it's really crucial for us to mitigate uh the issues from the communication from the client to us uh, to uh utilize uh, to utilize more resources or better and of course uh, to save our clients money because we, as we are an external team, it matters for the clients, so we don't spend sometimes too much on the budget if it's tight. Okay, thanks. Um, now I understand, I hope we all understand uh, why is it important for you and your companies. I've heard, uh, I've heard many interesting keywords here, so let's discuss them a bit further. Uh, just to mention them, it's utilization, cooperation, mutual understanding, balance, communication, support. Uh, things like that. Uh, let's go a little bit more into detail. Uh, I would like to start with cooperation, uh, cooperation between um, between uh, developers and product managers, uh, but it could be also just tech and the business or product. Uh, what does an effective cooperation between these two uh, means to you? What values does it bring to you? I'd, I'd really like to to hear the values. Why do we need to focus on effective cooperation? What does it bring to you? Anyone who'd like to start? Okay, I, I can start. Uh, well, it's, it, it's, it's crucial for us to bring like uh, depth into the exploration phase uh, as early as possible, because you know that uh, even though the, the solution is not ready for development, the, the point of view of, of a de developer might be, might be helpful to, to provide a real-time feedback to a product manager to actually inform him uh, real-time about the feasibility. And maybe uh, we can like uh, change, uh, change our uh, direction regarding uh, the, this, this feedback. So it might end up... Uh, Are you talking it, about... What, once again? Go ahead, sorry. Sorry, uh, go might, ahead. If, if might end up, uh, if, if, if it's not working that way, uh, we might end up with... Uh, having something prepared for developer uh, the development, which is not even feasible and we need to redo it. So including the developer as, as early as possible brings the valuable feedback. So yeah, uh, that's the, the most valuable thing for the, for the, for the product manager and even, even for the developer in, it creates like a, a, a commitment and engagement from early beginning. Did it ever happen to you that you provided something that didn't make sense to the developers and they worked on that? Well, uh, in product board, not, not that often, but uh, like uh, 
if I look back in Seznam, it was uh, sometimes very, uh, very common that uh, some, something was prepared by the product organization and then the developers gave the feedback and it needed to be like uh, 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 reworked. But it, it happens time to time that, that we need to like uh, um, uh, rework the, 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 the solution brief. I asked by purpose because, as I mentioned, we work for Cessna. We both work for Cessna, and I know what you're talking about. So glad you mentioned that. Um, uh, good. Uh, so I heard another great, uh, great keyword, which is uh, commitment and engagement. So let's get to let's get back to this later. But before that, I'd like to ask the other guys: uh, What does the effective cooperation means to you? What values does it bring to you, uh, Marianne? Yeah. Um... To, to think about it or to describe it more in, in, in practice, uh, uh, to me, of course, we can, in general, it's, uh, we, we look for, for outcomes, right? Uh, in, that, uh, in that terms, I mean the uh, features delivery outcomes uh, mainly. And um, uh, if we made the uh, cooperation work in the right way, um, in, we are simply getting more, more, more positive outcome from, you know, from our work. And that's, that's uh, what we look for, right? That's the principle or the axiom which we are trying to achieve here. The other thing, how to make it work is, uh, yeah, I might follow up on Michael's uh, comments that, you know, in the opposite way, which is that if we uh, experience uh, the companies as uh, developers where, you know, uh, we are mostly used to do uh, basic handovers, meaning, you know, here's the specification and uh, please make it work. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's, I would say, uh, uh, you know, a uh, path paved uh, for failure. So uh, that's exactly the thing which uh, I would love to uh, uh, avoid and eliminate. And uh, we do plenty of things to, to make uh, these uh, things happen in, in a positive way. So uh, it, it could be from, you know, making sure that uh, we again minimize the handover process, that we uh, get uh, the developers as soon as possible into the uh, you know solutioning phase or uh, exploration phase as, as we said it. Or basically it could be uh, that we organize our uh, company the way that we basically mitigate the, the gaps between the products and the uh, tech departments, right? So, uh, yeah, but to me, like uh, to start with, uh, if you want to make sure that, you know, your product managers start to work closely with, uh, with the dev, dev teams, the one thing which uh, helps the most uh, and to start with is just to uh, make people sit together. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the product managers are not sitting like separate from, from their delivery teams because, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, just for the sake of, you know, I'm a, I'm a big head of, head of PM and, uh, Want, want to you know enjoy it <laughs> that's not how it really works in terms of the cooperation <laughs> okay uh, thanks i've heard uh, i've heard uh, something about the team setup we'll get to this uh, we'll get to this later hopefully hmm. but before that uh, you mentioned that you need to kind of lead the cooperation the right way could you maybe say an example of what is the right way do I assume right that you're talking about that these teams sit together or is it like complex? What is the right way to you? Mm -hmm. You said it at the beginning, like, like let's do it yeah. the right way. Yeah. It yeah. Good. It is. I mean, yeah, thank you. There, there's plenty of things how to, how to, let's say, uh, engage uh, both of the sides more into uh, the way how to cooperate. Uh, it starts, for example, with, with again, as we said, uh, motivate the developers the way that, you know, the product managers uh, inform uh, about the uh, outcomes of, of uh, their work in terms of uh, epics or big features, etc. right? That, that is the, the, the first thing. The other thing is, for example, um, you know, from the top of my head, uh, it is that, for example, if you have some sort of OKRs or the roadmaps within the company, uh, it's the best way how to make it work is to again engage uh, the developers uh, or at least the tech leads uh, together with the PMs so they create the roadmap by themselves from uh, early from the beginning and it's not like you know the top 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 down <laughs> order uh, how how things should be happen happening right so uh, that's that's uh, basically one of the things so uh, in a previous company for example in terms of the uh, roadmaps one thing which I experienced is that we called it a 
Pandora Box uh, workshop, which was uh, really great. And uh, it was basically about that. Uh, you print out the, the main, uh, let's say, topics which you want to achieve in the next quarter, let's say. And uh, uh, there's plenty of you know, st stakeholders, product managers, and developers themselves included in this workshop. And uh, basically, uh, you vote for, you, you, you present your ideas, and uh, everybody has a certain amount of points, and so you, you distribute them among uh, those uh, A4 papers. And uh, that's a great way how to engage people into, into the roadmap, into what we are going to do to achieve. And at the same time, the side effect is that um, everybody's uh, heard, uh, meaning there is no surprises, right? So uh, everybody had an opportunity to explain himself and uh, uh, had an opportunity, what's even more important, to come up with his own idea, what, could, what should be the uh, part of the roadmap, right? So yeah, that's, that's uh, uh, at the, uh, for the starter, one of the few principles which I would like to share as well. Yeah, Pandora Box sounds like a good practice. Maybe, uh, maybe even some of the audience can try it. Uh, yeah, it's it's. I agree. It's all about the engagement, uh, involving people as soon as possible. But uh, before we get to Dominic, uh, you mentioned one more thing that was. Uh, it does make sense to bring um, things uh, as soon as possible to the developers. Uh, I can see some kind of a speed up here or uh, effectiveness. Why? C can you tell us what makes it fast? What makes it valuable? If if you if you if you uh, get um, get these things soon. Yeah, uh, maybe I, I will follow up uh, on what uh, exactly once again Michael said, which is basically you you want to make sure that you don't uh, uh, fix uh, or rework the items which uh, uh, have been given, right? So that's uh, that's the thing which I regard as as a basically a waste of time or the sort the top source of uh, inefficiency. Uh, with that in mind, again. Uh, we can think of having, let's say, uh, dual uh, dual track agile process of whatever. But uh, for the beginning, the the one thing which uh, I would recommend everybody to start with, at least, is that uh, just you you ask your tech lead and your product manager to sit together for let's say 10 to 30 minutes uh, on daily basis after the stand up to discuss like the items which uh, which are coming uh, as in terms of the input or in terms of the output. What are the details? How to make it work? Uh, this way, you engage, uh, you know, the tech lead into into what into what the product manager wants to achieve. While at the set, at the same time, you discuss the house as well. So, uh, uh, in other words, what I mean to say is that, uh, you know, uh, I would say five to ten years ago, I was taught to, you know, the product manager is about to say what, and uh, me as a developer, I'm about to 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 say how. Uh, but that's an, an again some sort of handover principle, which is. Uh, really like not not uh, effective you know and uh once again uh, if you at least engage uh, the uh, the tech lead and the product manager to work together at least for half an hour uh at the same time sitting together <laughs> that was really like uh, you, you you're gonna see miracles here the question for later is uh how to make this happen but that's a good practice i confirm uh, also we at Hebraica, this is something that is great yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne, very much. Uh, Dominic, uh, I just remind you the question, and that was, in your case, it's quite obvious from the basis of your company. But anyway, uh, what does an effective cooperation between devs and the product, which is like the client, means? What values does it bring to the company? Yeah, um, I'm glad that uh, you, you figured it out that it's uh, <laughs> kind of crucial uh, just because of the nature of how our business works. Uh, yeah, it basically means <laughs> uh, whether uh, we survive or not, whether we get the job or uh, whether we burn our, burn ourselves or not. Uh, I would just like to um, tell that how, how we work because it's, uh, it's important um, in... Uh, in the process that uh, yes there's a client on on uh, on and he's a uh, he might have or might not have uh, technical capabilities on on his side um, mostly they do not and that's why uh, need they need an uh, external uh, development and on our side there's a project manager uh, we might also call him a product manager as well sometimes because he he's something 
in between because on uh, our some of our uh, projects uh, he really works as a internal project uh, sorry product manager um, to to our devs but um, well uh, one of the thing is that uh, and it's uh, what um, it's what uh, Michal said basically is the uh, proving the feasibility because if we uh, got them thing like uh, okay can you do this and this and how much it will cost us and whether it's a new client or or a client of, uh, of us for a longer time we need to give him some estimate or even said that if it's possible or not so we really need to being effective in uh, not over promising uh, because as uh, we are still surprising that uh, some of other agencies well sometimes they don't care because I think that it's a process thing that they do not sometimes bother to ask the developers uh, and they just look at it and say yeah okay it won't be a problem it's similar similar to something we have done previously but there might be some slight detail which change the whole perspective on the on the uh, on, on the issue which needs to be solved and yeah if if the developer uh, is br brought to the process and uh, say okay we can do this like uh, in, in this manner or we can do it like that it's much easier to not being burned because if we overestimate uh, or underestimate uh, if we overestimate it might cost us the job because we would be too expensive if we underestimate uh, we will burn ourselves because uh, we will uh, we will work for free until it's done so that's a uh, that's problem from our side and one key to uh, having those, especially in uh, during uh, some longer projects which are going agile, is uh, having uh, project managers in our uh, company to be on very uh, high technical level, basically being developers who are sick and tired of uh, code uh, and they tend to manage things more and they are more comfortable with it. And it's really nice because they can uh, really uh, have a reasonable uh, arguments with the with the developers and uh, because sometimes even developers are not sure about something and uh, it's it's not like ping pong and there's there doesn't need to be someone who proves one or the other side or it's it's really a, a great benefit and it's one of the biggest benefits we hear from our clients that why they like working with us that the the may main uh, contact the key point the the project manager is uh, not just the email resender he can immediately respond to the questions and he can uh, immediately bring the answer to some solution uh, or even bring up the solution itself so uh, it's one of the uh, key benefits for us that if the project manager from our side is uh, on high tech level it brings us uh, really this level of uh, of uh, effective yeah. collaboration. Yeah, great, uh, great, great topic. Actually, uh, it's quite obvious uh, within your company. But guys, Marianne and Michal, uh, how is it within your companies? Uh, is it effective as well if the product managers understand the technical part? Why? On to Michael. Michael. Yeah, Michael. Okay, so uh, you know, the, I heard the, the opinion that it's not like. Uh, Good, good thing to, to have that the, the, the product manager can talk to technical stuff uh, because you know uh, he's trying to create a solution for the developers. But uh, we had some of the very skilled like uh, product managers here in product board, and you know uh, both like developers and product managers uh, are accountable for something. But it's really great that uh, if they can like find the common common speech and they can meet somewhere in the middle and they can find a common language. It's uh, very easy then to describe the problems and to find out the solution. So again, it's about the ability to talk to, talk to each other. And I would like to really em emphasize uh, like Marian's comment because you know that it's not, it's very obvious, but I saw it many times uh, people not doing that, not even meeting like once a month with their product manager so uh, like if, if nothing, I think that people should really take from this talk to uh, like uh, set the regular like one-on-ones uh, with, with the product manager 
uh, that that guy should be your best friend if you're engineering manager like so so build the trust uh, and togetherness and uh, That's great. The, the communication will come yeah i amen to that <laughs> so, sound great tell us the secret how to make it happen well it's very hard especially in in these days when when we have covid and everything is getting remote so uh, we have, for instance, uh, a virtual coffee. It's not the only thing with uh, like uh, in between the engineering manager and 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 the uh, and, and the product manager. But you know, the whole team is getting together uh, every day. It's like totally optional, 30 minutes, and uh, it's just a block in the calendar with the Zoom link. Everybody can connect to it, like uh, informal chat about uh, the weekend, last day, like struggles, life, everything. So. So that's that's one thing, and uh, obviously that the one-on-one -on -one through Zoom uh, shouldn't be omitted. And we also have some kind of remote celebration uh, in the evening after the big release. We can uh, send the bottle of Prosecco to our developers and and to, to celebrate like virtually, say cheers and uh, say you're great. We, we we made it. We have released it. So like the the time together is crucial. It doesn't matter if we are like on site or remote yeah so you're mentioning some kind of a chit chat after work uh, with the beer that's great but uh, do you want these people to talk about the work after the work so um, the point is you need to get them closer with uh, their area the developers uh, need to understand the product perspective and the product managers need to understand the developers perspective um, does only this, like um, having a beer after work, works? Well, well, not really, but it's uh, like uh, one of the one of the one of the uh, parts uh, because trust is built being built not only in, on work uh, work uh, uh, workplace but also in informal era. That that's one thing. But uh, on the other hand, like developers needs to still uh, like learn. Uh, about the product and what are the like uh, discovery techniques and who is the customer we can even try to bring uh, bring developers into customer call to see the real problems of the customer and to understand uh, uh, what the, the product manager is trying to solve uh, or even we can like explain to a product manager why it is important to to do such a, a technical stuff so uh, we are spending quite great amount of time during every grooming explaining uh, technical stuff to product manager and we are trying to make sure that the product manager totally understands well, what we are going to do and why it is important to keep our business running and uh, why it is important to do it now and not later. So uh, the, the transparency is uh, uh, another, another uh, uh, value uh, I would like to emphasize except trust. Okay, great, thank you very much. Uh, Marianne, what's your secret uh, to make uh, these people to talk together? Yeah, um, I mean, uh, uh, as Michael uh, had a good, many good points, uh, the one thing which came to my mind is uh, uh, no surprise, but I would say hiring. <laughs> uh, what I mean to say is that uh, I'm coming back to to the concept of you know to create a synergy between the the, the tech the, the tech lead and the the um, uh, product manager, and uh, if you if you have a good uh, let's say gut feeling for how to hire the you know the uh, counterpart for for your guy the way that you know if he's too much introvert let's let's hire somebody who's more extrovert etc or you know some some sort of the, these sort of techniques uh, this one really helps and. Uh, uh, that's you know if if you make this one work then the, and create a synergy then uh, basically you can forget the process and uh, the team works like hell and delivering like triple amount of, of outcomes compared to you know normal teams. Uh, but uh, coming back to some you know re really practical things, uh, of course the, we we as well uh, at Muse have a process about you know sort of scrum ban which is between between scrum and kanban about you know uh, making sure that uh, the product manager uh, is uh, um, has a voice uh, about uh, what uh, what's about to be prioritized for example right so we have many of the, you know the, the standard uh, uh, grooming planning meetings some of the retrospectives but that's that's not a big secret right 
the the one thing which uh, uh, I experienced and really helps is, for example, to create the uh, the design sprints, which is not a uh, not which is nothing new basically. And uh, if if you uh, I would say if you if you are given a task or or an epic or a theme which is really hard to to tackle and uh, it's for you know a quarter and it's really crucial for your team to to make it work then uh, i would recommend everybody to uh consider having a design sprint where you basically prototype your solution and it doesn't have to be working properly it's just about you know uh sitting together with the product manager with the stakeholders and uh, all the developers as a team for, uh, pardon me as a team for a week and uh it has a certain let's say agenda. Uh, I don't want to go too much into the details, but uh, the outcome is really cre clear that you uh, test and you ask for the feedback from the stakeholders of, of uh, what's, what's your achievement here. Plus, uh, the one thing to empathize here is uh, it's not about having the working prototype. You can, you can finish your solution being, for example, uh, just uh, uh, design designed in, in certain certain let's say uh design framework and that's uh, that that's about it and uh, or even to to you know um create your your uh, how it looks uh, pages into on on a, on the paper on a, on a whiteboard whatever right and creating some, some sort of arrows for you know how uh the uh, end user is going to cooperate or you know what was the the the, uh, the process there behind and uh, once again, this one really helps because from the beginning, you have a much higher chance to succeed and not to waste your time and to, again, rebuild and rework uh, some of the things uh, which you haven't thought, thought through before. So in other words, the skeleton is uh, most probably uh, re really stable. Yeah. Um, and the, the other thing which I wanted to, to, to say is, uh, again, a simple trick. But uh, to engage more, for example, the uh, developers into the uh, the product management side, uh, the one thing which we used to do uh, is uh, to create an ownership of a certain feature or epic, if you like, uh, to a given uh, um, uh, developer. Uh, with that in mind, basically you rotate the ownership of the of the features and epics. It doesn't mean that. The developer himself has to implement all, all the things, you know, from scratch uh, uh, end to end. It's more about, you know, I, now I'm the owner of the epic, and I want to make sure that the, uh, it, it is a success story, which uh, pushes you to work more with the product manager, asking the questions like, is it going the right way? What's the acceptance criteria? Which is, uh, <laughs> which is, which I used to see most often missing, for example, in some of the companies. And uh, then uh, to quickly, you know, reiterate and ask for the feedback. And uh, w without uh, like further thinking, you, you could also include a phase of how to deploy certain things or how to make sure that, you know, uh, your feature is stable into production, et cetera, which comes down to the logging, monitoring, et cetera. But uh, the thing is, uh, once again, you own the whole feature and you're responsible for making it happen end to end. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong, but do I understand it right that um, that the developer, as uh, who has the ownership, uh, mm -hmm. uses the product manager most like most like a, like a consultant or someone who helps the developer to deliver the the, the epic? Because uh, usually in the teams, mm -hmm. the product managers are from some perspective uh, to kind of uh, uh, um, leaders of these teams. Mm -hmm. And they usually decide what needs to be done. And the very interesting concept that I've been thinking about for a long time is that mm -hmm. maybe the product manager is, is not the leader that decides what needs to be done or how it, how to do that. Mm -hmm. But maybe he's just a consultant for the team. Um, this is like a real... Um, we think about uh, the role as it is. So he's not the leader. He has a role of product manager. Yeah, Almost like you would you would cut out the manager from there. Um, so does it work this way or? Yeah, truly to say, I never experienced this this sort of structure, but uh, I will strongly support you with this idea because to me, exactly the product manager, he manages the product. He doesn't manage, you know, people as, as we used to uh, tend to think about it. So uh, again, to me, product manager is a, is, a, is a person who helps really greatly into 
what what has the right priority who's able to say no to what's not that much important or what seems to be urgent <laughs> and while at the same time he still gathers feedback and uh, uh motivates people uh, in the way that uh it ma you, it makes you sure that you're going to achieve and uh, your your outcomes the, the last thing last not but least uh, is that he should be one who uh, states clearly the acceptance criteria for all the features, right? So, and again, that's sort of a consulting, uh, I would say, role of cooperation, how to make things work. So I, I'm fully with you in, th in this case. So yeah, that's, that's, um, that's the point. <laughs> actually, I'm just thinking about that. I've never seen it either. So yeah. hopefully, maybe we'll get to there. I'm not sure if it would work, but yeah. Yeah, this is a very interesting concept anyway with the ownership rotation that's great uh, I, I personally like it uh, uh, maybe just a few things that you mentioned uh, uh, just uh, recap this you mentioned hiring that you focus on hiring hiring right people into the team yeah. uh, I would add a, a, just a little thing from from Heureka. we include product managers uh, even they even can vote uh, whether to hire a developer or not so it's not uh, just the manager or the team of developers um, to decide whether to hire someone or not it's also and also the product managers vote counts so, so they're engaged in, even in choosing the team which works mm -hmm. really great for us i like it uh, then you mentioned design prints yeah would you like to add something yeah i'm just saying i like it <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, quite concept that we do here um, to put as much decision making onto the team and the team as uh, as a unit, not a specific role. So usually what I do, I don't decide that much. I let the team decide and the whole team, all the, all the roles on the team. Okay, but it's not about me today. Uh, you mentioned design sprints. Uh, um, if I understand it right, this is about getting product managers and developers closer to work on a topic or something, project or just MVP or POC, whatever it is, more closely together from the very beginning, which helps uh, the engagement. Is it right? Yeah, yeah, we can call it also Sprint Zero, right? I, I've seen this term somewhere. Sprint Zero, great. <laughs> great thing, Sprint Zero, sounds good. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Marianne. I want to yeah. Do that, that, uh, yes, please, go ahead. <laughs> Because uh, Marianne has mentioned uh, like end-to-end uh, -end ownership uh, on, on Epic level. We also do that and it, it's working like brilliant. So I would definitely recommend it. Like uh, uh, I think that uh, if you're trying to create like empowered product teams that the development team should be able to make some small like product decisions on their own without even like consulting the product manager. So that's the ideal case, obviously. So we are not there yet in, in, in every case, but like uh, ideally, yes. And we also rotate the ownership and it's actually the great tool how to, uh, how to support the, the, the soft skills development uh, for developers because you know that they need to present something, then they need to like uh, 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 reach out to stakeholders, like uh, reach out to the designer and like figure out how, how, how he's thinking about it. So that, that was one thing. And regarding uh, like HR process and hiring, that, that we, we have like a similar thing because when we are hiring product manager, we have a round, uh, we call it like a Trinity. We have like a, another PM there. We have like a designer or uh, engineering lead. So these three guys needs to like uh, agree on that, that, that the candidate is, is great for us. And the, the same for engineering. The, the product manager also like uh, you can see the, the the engineer and like uh, give the feedback. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Dominic, would you like to add something uh, to remind you? We are talking about um, we started from the tech uh, projects or um, how to make uh, product managers to understand the technical part. And as you already mentioned, this is just the basis for your work because this is the connection between. Uh, the developers and the clients. This is the connection and you need that. Is there anything would you like to add? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's uh, a new thing because uh, those already uh, been covered uh, by guys, but uh, I would like to put our perspective on it. Uh, we, we definitely support uh, things like design sprints uh, or even we call it uh, workshops with the clients when we sit for uh, 
even whole day or two days and we really define well if it's uh the whole mvp it takes longer than uh, some epic or even some bigger b- bigger story but uh yeah just to sit everyone together and uh that even the you know the product manager the client the pr- developer and the designer they the, everyone knows uh, really what's of the what needs to be done and everyone issues uh raises issues from their perspective and uh yeah so it's very intensive from our side uh, with the client to put him in uh you know like being a part of uh, of the development it's uh, it's uh it's crucial for us and also we do the the design sprint if there's uh uh for for some features that uh we have a parallel sprints to the to the actual development uh where we design the features up front um and even there uh developers are necessary as has been mentioned before that uh if a product uh, designs a feature which just doesn't work technically or is uh it might work technically but might cost so much development hours or resources computing resources for example that it's not feasible to do it that way the developer can raise an uh, issue uh, and uh come up with alternate solution which might be also a good for a product but it will work from the technical standpoint for uh, you know it's it's not that uh, you don't need uh, additional 20 instances to compute it because we can take if we take like this number uh, will it be okay for the product yeah it will be okay so uh, even during uh, during designing the functions uh, so yeah uh, we we do uh, we do that as well uh and mm, yeah i think that uh, this is the most uh, most uh, helpful thing uh from from our perspective okay. uh that works well uh, design sprint sounds uh, very interesting we've tried uh, we've tried it but uh, maybe it's ahead of us to use it more widely but anyway uh, i think that one of the mostly used word here in this conversation is engagement we've used it many times uh, let's get uh, a little bit back to it. Uh, why do you think that engagement, in the right um, way of meaning of this word, why is it important? Uh, can't you just uh, can't you just brute force things to happen with your management skills? Why do you need engagement of, of developers and product managers? Why, why is it good? I think I can I can I, I can start on this one from our side as we are doing a lot of uh, different things. It's a lot of different projects it's it's really about motivation that if people feel engaged they uh they take uh the, their project for for their own it's uh it's something which is uh which is obvious for the product companies because if i'm joining as a developer to the product company i know that i will work for next two years on this project particular project i will build this project but if you are going to the agency you know that Okay, they have those kind of clients. They do those kind of apps, but you never know uh, what you will work on in the next uh, two years. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a bit of adventure. <laughs> so uh, how do you do that? Uh, what? How? What? Uh, what do yeah, you yeah. What, what's, what's the tool that you use for this uh, to make uh, to make this work? Yeah, it's it's kind of balancing as we have a more. We try to prefer when the new project comes. Of course, uh, it's not that easy all the time. We uh, try to balance if someone someone is feeling that he has been working on projects which are not satisfying him lately. Uh, we're trying to cheer him up if uh, the project suits him well, because you know if it's uh, for uh, his favorite uh, brand, uh, we try to. Put him on the project so he can he can he, he feel real uh, more related to it but again if the engagement itself uh really helps with it if uh if the developer know that he can change things on the project even though he's not fascinated by it he takes it like okay i can uh i can change something so yeah the the engagement means motivation for us it's a uh, it's a really great thing and again comes again back to the effectivity uh if the developer is engaged he can uh he can save us from a lot of trouble if we overpromise or 
uh, or overestimate. So the standard. How how do you how do you recognize uh, actually how do you recognize demotivation disengagement when working for different clients? Uh, do they tell you or how do you recognize these people that might have yeah. this feeling inside? You know. Actually, it's uh, it's it's the soft skills. It's the working with people. It's uh, it's we are we have a uh, seven seventy people. So you know people a lot by detail. Uh, I'm 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 really helping our HR. Uh, we have our team leaders, and they really know the people well. So we know uh, who's suited for which projects. It's uh, yeah you know their interest, you know how they feel lately. So you know, if, okay, uh, would it be better for you if uh, if you start on this new project and you are trying to, you know, compensate them some frustrations or uh, you know that if they're suited for the job uh, that you know, okay, it might be critical. Uh, it might be really uh, close cooperation with the client and you know, okay, this guy doesn't feel so comfortable working together with client and you might have another developer who says, okay, I would like to go uh, more into contact with the clients so you can put him there. And uh, yeah, there are many aspects uh, like those. And we are trying by knowing our people uh, to yeah, yeah. making this chemistry working. Um, I'm not sure if there's some universal rule for this. It's just a hard, uh, hard work of uh, not only working on the tech skills, but only like, working as a team on a, on a soft skills, like knowing each other and helping each other out. It's a hard work on soft skills. Yes, it's hard work on soft skills as well. And is it, is it like you having these soft skills or are you teaching um, your colleagues or some roles in the company to have these skills? Yeah, uh, we, uh, we, well, I do believe that I have uh, this skill and I think it's been proved uh, <laughs> uh, from time to time uh, during, during the existence of the company, but we do teach, well, it's, it's not that you can teach. Uh, you, you can go, get better at it, but uh, it's hard to be teach. But uh, our team leaders, we uh, selected people who are able to, uh, to work on those, to like really caring about their people. So they are not, our team leaders of, the, of our tech teams do not necessarily be the best tech leaders, but they need to be the best team leaders for the team overall. So not only some balance between those soft skills and, and, and the hard skills or the tech skills. So uh, me, our CEO, the HR and the team leaders. Okay, great. I just confirmed that, that choosing your team leads wisely is, it could be the key. And uh, for uh, me educating these uh, team leaders, it's uh, another crucial thing. But the idea here, I just repeat that the best developers might not be the best managers. And this is yes. something all of us, I guess, experienced. Uh, and this is something what's not, uh, what's not, what is happening quite often that the best developers kind of are raised and in the end they are the, the, the tech, the, they are team leaders, maybe not good team leaders. All right. Uh, if I can add on, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, it, it's just that, yeah, I wrote some article on it. Uh, I, I might post it uh, for, for interested ones in the chat that how we actually chose and build uh, those team, team leaders and how we educate them. And we got help from actually, uh, you know, uh, Irena, she's helping you with uh, Heureka events, right? So yeah, yeah. we hired external coach for this because uh, it's it's sure. it's something I would recommend for sure. everyone if you're trying to build uh, those kind of uh, management roles and, uh, and and teach those people. You, you can't do it. It's harder to do it on your own, and it's better to uh, hire some professional on it uh, because it's much faster and uh, and people feel really motivated that you brought someone external to. Uh, who can take care of it and uh, right. that's that's a 
Well, it's not today about like uh, managers, and but but I I saw it like many times. Like the, the I think the the most common leadership mistake that we are making our uh, best developers, very bad managers. Like uh, we should always have like al alternative like growth path for for those who are not uh, skilled enough to lead people, but they can grow into I don't know staff engineer or or principal engineer positions and. Uh, and still be like very valuable for the company. And like regarding like um, uh, uh, engagement, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I know some, I heard some old like saying that there are like two masons all like putting stones together, uh, coming to work every day and the work is hard. And uh, like uh, the one is saying, okay, uh, I am just uh, putting the stones together. The work is hard and my life sucks. and second one doing exactly the same job says okay the work is hard the stones are heavy i'm putting them together all day long but i'm the building the defense wall which will defend our like uh, nations against our enemies so so my wife can sleep well and that's why i love my job so uh, that's the, the the difference in between uh, how the, the bigger picture can, may affect the motivation because again i saw it many times that i i call them like the diggers because they're digging the hole which is like two meters uh, wide, two meters long and two meters deep. And without the context, it's just a, just a hole or a piece of coat, a class or, or whatever. And uh, the guy with the bigger context uh, is not waiting for the product manager to tell what to do next. He would probably figure it out on, on his own. And those guys are much faster because they, they have a mission. So that's why in, uh, engagement of development team is, is, is I think, the, the, the best driver for the performance. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. Maybe what might be interesting here at this moment is what's the magic? How to avoid things that you mentioned, how to make th nice things to happen, as you mentioned, how to do that. That's like the crucial thing. We've all heard this, but how yeah. to make it happen? Well, I think that it's, uh, all about how how do you communicate your vision and that bigger picture mm -hmm. so that uh, I would say like over communicate because you know that uh, managers uh, typically uh, think that they said it it was on whole hands it was in some presentation it was mentioned but if you ask the developer what is the vision and why we are doing what we are doing they would typically say I don't know <laughs> somebody told me to do so so we are trying to, to, to repeat what is the mission, what are uh, the OKRs for, for, the, for this quarter, uh, why we are doing what we are doing, like uh, during every single like occasion or every single chance we have, we are using for that. And still there are some people that, that, that don't know why. Uh, I, I guess that they're just not listening when we're saying that, but uh, more often you can do that, more people will, will actually get the, the bigger picture and become motivated, like uh, 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 vision, vision, uh, vision takers. Yeah, over communicate, it's good, but not too much. It can't be a brainwash. Um, okay, thank you, Michael. Uh, Marianne, you didn't speak for some, some time. Uh, yeah, the, the question no worries, was, like, sorry for that. The question was, uh why is engagement important could you make things happen just just uh, with your management skills why do you need to get people engaged right um simply put uh it's much easier if you if you have people being engaged as opposed to chase them to accomplish something because you know that's that's the part uh, principle I would, uh, you know, refer to basically, if you spend 80% of your time chasing people, then <laughs> the rest 20%, I highly doubt that you're an effective manager and uh, your people will like the way how you cooperate and make things work in the end. And uh, most probably they will, they will leave you. And, uh, you know, and even the, the rest of the 20% will not satisfy you enough to uh, you know, uh, take care of the hiring. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my view, right? The the other thing, however, how to make this sort of engagement come through? I guess that Michael and Dominic, uh, you, you know, we we pretty much exp you know covered uh, most uh, of the things. The the one uh, 
idea in particular which i like is uh you know and that comes back to another keyword which is satisfaction uh yeah. in typically the satisfaction of of you know uh, the developers uh, uh what i mean by that is uh, um typically you need to make sure that uh the developers and the whole team gets the proper feedback uh, of uh, how their features ended up and uh, what's what's the uh, added value there uh, whether it really helped somebody whether it was a super cool feature or just normal feature or whether it already uh, you know starting to earn uh, money and uh, you know provide enough revenue so for 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 example for your team if you just by the way you know uh, go go around the team and say okay so uh, this sort of feature you have been working on uh, gave us uh, revenue x and uh, for for now it means that you're basically safe because uh, you know you're earning more money than 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 it costs then then that that's hell of a motivation right so uh, again the the feedback loop which is basically that uh, people are really interested and first and secondly informed about uh, you know how their implementation feature uh, features being implemented ended up in practice that's that's a that's the number one principle right the uh, other thing however in terms of again engagement um uh, other, another practical tip i'd like to share is uh uh you know uh to for example to to uh, have a certain form of retrospectives between the product managers and uh, and uh, technical uh, leaders, for example. So what I what I mean by that is, for example, once per quarter, uh, you just do a full day workshop when uh, uh, there is no clear agenda. <laughs> it's about again uh, doing the retrospective in the morning, so you gather the most uh, you know uh, stuff or the top five themes. Uh, um, after lunch and then you basically ask people to decide what are the top three themes to tackle in the afternoon uh, the uh, the rule is that every every theme uh, uh, takes let's say 45 minutes to be discussed and there has to be uh, specific outcomes by the, by that I don't mean like uh, you know you know how to fix the fix the, the specific issue it could be uh, that we discussed a certain path and uh, there's going to be a, a typical, typically an owner being, assi being, an assi being assigned to resolve that issue or to move it forward, right? And if you repeat this pattern for, you know, on a quarterly basis, uh, while making sure, I want to state explicitly that there is a follow-up on, on the items, <laughs> uh, it creates a amazing environment of cooperation between the uh, product manager and the uh, the uh, the tech lead, uh, which comes back to you know to the keyword of of engagement. So uh, that that's another, I would say, thing which uh, we can cover here here as well. So just uh, um, just question: How does it look? Like, how does this even look like? Uh, how many people are involved actually in the whole day workshop? Is it just the uh, product managers and the tech lead, or how many people? Just yeah, it. Um... Yeah, having having the you know all the development department there would be wouldn't be like too much effective because uh, yeah. So what I used to do is uh, uh, in a previous company I st we started to do it with uh, my peer head of uh, which who was uh, head of uh, product management, and uh, it was uh, about uh, you know head of engineering, head of product manager um, management plus uh, the tech leads plus uh, all, all the all the product managers themselves. Right, and it was about like uh, ten to fifteen people. Uh, I have to say, uh, it's not easy to manage such a uh, meeting, you know, because there, there's, uh, I would say, a bunch of people already, uh, uh, you know, incorporated with that. But uh, you just ask in the morning, exactly as I said, uh, like what's what's uh, what's going good, what's going wrong, what 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 things to be improved. A typical retrospective, right? And uh, you ask every each and everyone to spend, uh, you know. Uh, three minutes uh, well, uh, and to write his ideas uh, or improvements on a post-it notes and explain it uh, before uh, in front of the, the whole audience, right? And after this sort of, uh, you know, round is over, uh, you have lunch, you, you just pick the, the top themes, you group uh, all the post-it notes the way that uh, uh, you group them into, into certain, let's say, themes which make more sense. 
and then you just ask people what are the top themes they want to tackle that's that's everything yeah, yeah. and again <laughs> need to make sure that there, there's a follow-up and because uh, if, if uh, uh, I would say if uh, you demonstrate that there is no improvement and still there is a third meeting ongoing, then people, surprise, surprise, are not going to tell you anything or share their ideas because it's just a waste of time. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for this, uh, for this uh, advice. Yeah, follow-ups are highly, highly needed. Without that, nothing works yeah. or barely works. Uh, before we move on, I have a message to the audience, to the participants uh, uh, that are listening to us. Do not hesitate to ask questions in Slido. We will have some dedicated time after this discussion in about 20 minutes. So we have about 20 minutes more. A lot of topics to cover, but do not hesitate to ask questions. We will get to, to them later. Uh, guys, uh, maybe before we move on, is there anything else in your toolbox that uh, boosts motivation within your teams? Is there anything that you would advise to, to us? You mentioned a couple of these, uh, maybe something that we didn't mention. I can start by myself. Um, um, you know, the, I, I guess we uh, we covered pr quite a lot of things or tips and tricks, I have to say. Um, um, the other thing is that, uh, I guess, Michael, you uh, expressed uh, uh, your will to uh, to a high level of transparent to have a high level of transparency in the company, right? And uh, what I mean 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 by that is not about like, of course, uh, not having people intriguing, etc. Which some of the thing, some of people are are thinking this is this is not transparency, but to me the true transparency is about uh, um, making sure that uh, a people have focus and they know what to, what they are working on actually. What I mean by that exactly is that, for example, you provide a report on a on a monitor or on a whiteboard screen or whatever, which uh, basically uh, provides you the overview of uh, what are the epics which are actually in progress, what's what's the uh, completion of the OKRs, what's their completion percentage, for example, uh, and uh, what's what what are the next, let's say, big things or epics to be uh, to be tackled afterwards, right? So it it sounds to be simple, stupid. But if you just provide like the, the I would say the, the list of, okay, these are the 15 top epics or themes which uh, we as a whole company are going to tackle in our um, development department and what's their status, what's maybe their uh, expected arrival date or, or the, these sort of things, who's responsible, who's working on that. It, it's, it really greatly helps to make things uh, push forward, right? And uh, okay. the last thing which comes to my mind <laughs> so, sorry for that. Go it's, ahead. Uh, Go ahead. It's, uh, just uh, you know, uh, all of us experienced or are experiencing the uh, uh, the notion of uh, things not being completed 100%. Uh, what I meant to say is, uh, uh, for example, we have OKRs, right, and uh, or the roadmaps or whatever, and uh, uh, it has to be, let's say, completed all the epics or or the, these sort of things. And uh, the the one trick which I would highly advise to all the pro all the uh, product managers and uh, engineering managers is to make sure that people have focus and they will thank you for that. Practically speaking, it's about making sure that uh, if you have the epics or themes, and uh, these uh, let's say epics are split into you know the stories or the features or whatever as usual into the ticketing system make sure that you prioritize at least 50% uh, of them uh, for, the, for the upcoming sprint or whatever cycle you have in, in your mind. It could be even 70% in case uh, your team works on some sort of uh, you know, startup. Uh, it could be uh, back to 55% because you know, uh, your product is already pretty mature and there's a lot of uh, support and maintenance being done, which is totally fine. But still, if you measure uh, this uh, thing, which is uh, like the roadmap contribution ratio, which is like easily very easy to ma to manage and to measure and to provide such metrics, then then it really helps. And uh, again, people will thank you for that because all in sudden uh, there will be teams which will accomplish their goals in a much better manner, and uh, they will be again. Uh, 
uh, getting a positive feedback for that and being considered as, as a good and senior teams. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. May Dominic, I, you would like to add okay. something? Thank you. Um, I got one thing which I would like to add uh, to the question tips uh, which might uh, increase the motivation or the engagement of the developers. And I think it goes along with, uh, with the transparency. And I think it's uh, one simple word and it's, it's, it's the honesty. Uh, sometimes it means uh, just, okay, some jobs are, well, boring. Something you, some task might not be the best one, but yeah, it still work and it needs to be done. And if you ask someone, please, I know that it's not the best, uh, best job uh, you would like to do, but still it's needed for the company. It's needed for the team. Please, uh, could you please take care of it? And people, when they hear it, when they hear it, up from when they hear it clear uh, and it's not like, you know, next time you will get something and it's not that bad. Yeah, if you are honest with them, okay, we know it's not what you would expect it, but please, if you will take care of it, it would really mean much to me. Uh, they will really, uh, yeah, it increases. I think it's a tip. Well, being honest, it should be a standard, yeah. but uh, yeah, I think it's tip be uh, everywhere. Might increase. Yeah, it, it might yeah. be tip uh, how to increase the motivation and uh, yeah, and engagement. Thank you for that. Michael, do you have anything in your toolbox? Yes, uh, I have just, uh, because everything was mentioned. So we have uh, one, one channel in Slack where the customer facing teams are like sharing every single, like uh, it's called love. So uh, if the customer mentioned that, oh, I really love this new feature, uh, that the customer facing team would probably uh, post it into Slack, uh, like tag the developers into it. So, so you can see the, the feedback on what you're doing, that that's one thing. And the second one is recognition. If, if, if somebody uh, does something very special, uh, we need to recognize him. And it's not about money, but maybe like publicly saying, hey, this guy did very, very great job. So it can like motivate the guy to do even more and the others because they also want, want to be like uh, shouted out. But uh, I must say that it's like kind of, uh, uh, you, you don't need to do that like too often because some of the guys that are not giving shout outs uh, like that often as, as a colleagues might get demotivated on, on the other hand. So like use it uh, wisely and it, it may improve motivation as well. Yeah, I can second that. At Muse, we have, we call it uh, uh, kudos and shames and bloppers <laughs> as, as, as a specific uh, Slack channel <laughs> where we are exactly like, uh, it's, it's not about just uh, the feedback from the, from the customer. It's also that, you know, we can raise uh, some of the, uh, let's say, positive outcomes uh, between, between each other internally as well. And uh, coming back to what you have said, uh, it greatly helps to, to the term of transparency and openness and motivation. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, I just add that we also have a channel in Slack for this purpose. It's called, uh, in Czech, it's called unicorns. Mm -hmm. In order to say, so you can give a unicorn to someone to recognize uh, that he did something good. And that's very nice, a nice uh, way to, for recognition. All right, so we mentioned focus. Honesty, transparency, recognition, a lot of keywords and buzzwords, and you gave us some advices how to achieve these. So thank you for this. Let's move on. We have, uh, I think we have like two topics that I'd like to touch at least a bit, uh, and we have some 15 minutes uh, for as, as the time frame that we said before we get to the Slido and the questions from the audience. So uh, the, the, these topics are, um, uh, roadmaps, um, uh, milestones, roadmaps, how do you do the planning, estimation and stuff. The other topic I'd like to maybe end the discussion with would be um, the relationship between CTO and CTO and how does it relate or reflect down to the teams. Uh, you know, uh, we all are talking about uh, or, or we all know that we have some partner within our role. What should be the relation with the partner? But Let's start with roadmaps. Uh, we've mentioned this before. You mentioned estimations. Uh, and I'd like to hear what is the trick that works for you uh, that you are able to drive the development the right way, but also to be able to deliver. 
and maybe just give us a technique that you use. I know this is really complex when we get to roadmaps and planning and maybe a strategy planning, but can you just shorten it a bit? Just what is the essence here? Whoever wants to start. Well, I think I, I should start because I'm responsible for the part of the product board yeah. that is actually doing these roadmaps. So <laughs> great. Uh, so in our case, it's uh, through OKRs. So it all starts with uh, like uh, Hubert as, as a CEO providing us some uh, executive uh, guidance. What should be the focus for the for the next quarter, or maybe even even uh, uh, even a year or uh, some period of time? Those objectives are like uh, propagated to a leadership team. Um, we have like tribe structure, so we have like basically three tribes. I'm responsible for uh, or four tribes, but one one is like uh, merged together. So I'm responsible for these two tribes that are merged together, and I have my engineering uh, or product director counterpart. And our goal is to actually reflect this long-term vision uh, for coming from our CEO into our like uh, pillar or tribe OKRs. So uh, I'm bringing in the technical vision, like uh, technical uh, uh, strategical uh, initiatives we need to do to enable our uh, like uh, business to scale more and uh, to, to um, actually uh, pay some technical debt. And he is bringing uh, a technical or product initiatives uh, we'd like to focus on uh, to actually um, uh, speed up our business. So we are merging that together, like talking about uh, what is uh, about about the priorities, what is uh, of, of higher priorities. And, but that's not all. That's a top-down approach. At the same time, we are asking uh, every single developer to provide, uh, or even as every single product manager to provide ideas. How can we improve product board in the future? And uh, actually we are using product board for that. That's why the tool exists. So everybody is providing these ideas in the product board. We have these high level objectives in product board and we, we are prioritizing each idea towards this, this objective. So if you are the, 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 the idea maker and you have provided something, you can see that uh, where is your idea in the list of, of, of priorities for the next quarter? And what is the impact of your idea towards the, the, the higher goal? So it's totally transparent. Uh, you, you, you have a, a sense of you're being hurt because your idea was considered, was prioritized and was put on the list. And after all, uh, we are like uh, uh, somehow like merging these technical and uh, product objectives together, if it's possible. If it's not, we have like two separate objectives. And there is, I don't want to go too, too deep down the rabbit hole, but you know that uh, there, are, there is some capacity planning and in ideal state, we will end up with the agile roadmap. So uh, now, next, later. Uh, now we are working on that later. We need to do some discovery or exploration later can wait. And the, the point is that we're uh, working on the top priorities first, and it doesn't really matter uh, what, is, what is the time frame of it because you know that you have the guarantee that uh, the, the, the most impactful things will be delivered first. I can see that uh, the magical, the magic here is something like a two-sided two approach, uh, bottom up and top down, or like top down and bottom up, which uh, works uh, for us in Heureka as well. Guys, uh, what is the magical essence uh, in your companies, Marianne, that, uh, uh, that makes your uh, roadmaps, milestones, uh, planning, uh, anything like that work? Is there something behind, behind it? Yeah, um, the, to, to follow up on, on uh, Michael, um, uh, to, explain, to explain the principle, it's very similar to what you have said. So we also have the quarterly OKRs and uh, uh, they are reflect, reflected to uh, we call it roadmaps, but they are they are more of more or less milestones, right? Which uh, are important than to to achieve to, uh, for us. The trick uh, which uh, we do, for example, to uh, make sure that we tackle the technical debt and uh, and uh, uh, that the OKRs are not gonna let's say cannibalize uh, our our business in long term 
is that uh, we agreed to have the, uh, we call it consolidation to features ratio in uh, one to two, meaning that, uh, you know, half of uh, the items which uh, we plan compared to the features are going to be designated to, to uh, technical depth, basically. And uh, with that in mind, we basically have the uh, uh, two roadmaps. Uh, one is technical, the other thing is, uh, is uh, the, the uh, business or product uh, roadmap, if you will. And um, mm, with that in mind, we make sure that these roadmaps are followed while, you know, the, uh, we, we make sure that we work on the OKRs. And again, just to make sure that uh, we really are going to achieve our goals or doing our best to achieve it, is to make sure that uh, our roadmap contribution in terms of the planning is at least uh, 50%, right? Um, that's, that's one thing if I can advise to, to do for everyone, because, you know, psychologically people tend to pick the items which are not that much high priority and uh, they just want to get their satisfaction level out of, you know, completing something which might at the end not really contribute to, to the outcome, right? Which is expected. Um, I see. Yeah. Yeah. You, I, I just wanted to do that. You, you guys mentioned the OK. Ours, which is not very common in Czech Republic. Uh, so maybe if you could briefly uh, introduce uh, the audience, what it is in two sentences? I know it kind of get complicated, but two sentences. What is OKR? I will uh, leave it up to Michael because he's a guru in that <laughs> field. I, I just I just saw some uh, nice post or, or from Heureka Group uh, explaining <laughs> OKR. <laughs> but, okay, go ahead, uh, Michael. Explain it to us. Okay, so uh, basically, in, uh, like main difference for me in between like APIs and OKRs is that it's informative framework. So, the, the main goal is not not to judge like people's performance, but to inform like people what is the the the, the direction the company is going, and the uh, like magic of it is that it's hierarchical. So. Uh, you can track uh, if if you have the the team level OKR or even uh, individual OKRs. You can track uh, how do you actually contribute to the overall company vision and strategy. So in my eyes, that's uh, that's that's something that supports the, the transparency, and that provides people that bigger picture I was I was talking about. So uh, it's basically uh, on every level you can you can find that. I'm building feature A that will support that uh, the department vision and that will support that like uh, overall company vision. Like in ideal case, I know that in Heureka you have OKRs even for the uh, non R&D departments. We don't have it yet, so you're ahead. Uh, but you know, uh, in, in, it's the, the best, 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 best way to, to go that uh, everybody in the company knows uh, why they're doing what they're doing like uh, in comparison with the overall company vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can only confirm this, that uh, all the keywords that we mentioned today are somehow covered by OKRs or you can cover them by OKRs. This is just a great tool to, to drive your goals, company goals, and it's just great. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Michael, for the explanation. Marianne, I, I, I saw you wanted to add something. Yeah. Um, without explaining how we, what we do in terms of the OKRs. Um, uh, the caviar is that uh, one thing to recommend is not to think too much or to, not to automate too much, uh, you know, the metrics uh, throughout which you measure the uh, OKR's outcome, right? So, because uh, I've seen in, uh, in, uh, in practice that people spend uh, first month of their initiative about just about uh, on, on, on one single thing, which is about how are we going to measure our, our outcome or in, in the more, you know, automated way. And that's that's really a sort of a waste of time. Um, nevertheless, uh, again, we mentioned uh, the also the bottom-up approach, which I would really like to comment on because you know, as we said, OKRs are there basically you know top-down thing. Uh, but the caviar is that if you do the uh, bottom-up bottom-up approach uh, in terms of uh, you know asking people what are their ideas which might come to the OKRs at the end, that's the best combination which you can achieve really. And uh, uh, in a previous company I was working, we came up with uh, with uh, with an idea we call we call it innovation days, where basically each and every people was given uh, uh, two days per month of uh, of let's say experimenting or prototyping on different things, 
and it could be really uh, product or non-product related or internal process related, whatever you can, you comes to your mind. And uh, you basically create a tiger team around you uh, if, if you get a buy-in from, for, for your idea. And uh, of course, uh, there might be some things where, which are designated to a failure, which is a lesson learned as well. No, no worries there. But if you, the bottom up is if you end up with, let's say, uh, 30 to 40 percent of uh, ideas which turn to be success or potentially to be successful, uh, it, that's, that's really great. So you have to incom- incorporate a certain ratio of, of waste in advance, not to be really like against that, you know. So uh, that's, that's really a great thing to do because at the end, uh, you provide people to come up with, uh, with uh, uh, their own ideas as opposed to just asking people each, uh, let's say, quarter or half a year or once per year, what is your idea? Please tell me now because that's not how uh, yeah. human, human yeah. brain works. That's very, that's very important part. Uh, but let's not forget, forget about Dominic. Uh, the, the topic is roadmap. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. We had a couple. Yeah, it's of okay. I'm fine. Now. Uh, now it's your now it's your space to talk about roadmaps and not and like uh, how do you do that? But most importantly, what is the magical essence that makes uh, your framework work? Yeah. Uh, well, for us, it's quite different. That's why I also wasn't uh, you know running up for the word uh, because I don't have much to say uh, on this topic. Uh, one thing I think I might say about it is that uh, we are not the ones who are creating the roadmap uh, most of the times. We are, uh, we are um, well, we are trying to, uh, how could I say? Well, I'm not saying arguing about the roadmap, but uh, we are trying to, uh, like, pr- stamping the proof of okay this is what could be done and this is not possible and okay if you could if you want uh, to our clients and if you want to be there in half a year it would probably need a team of this size of, or that size so we are not in a, in, a, in a position where we create a roadmap but we are uh, you know like helping shaping it I would say so that's that's uh, and as we are not seeing that much on our clients' business decisions and uh, things behind, it's really hard for us to cope with it. So from mm-hmm. our side, it's basically mostly, okay, this is doable and this is not doable. Okay, uh, maybe can we skip this or that uh, or maybe um, switch something uh, or things like that. So we are mostly commenting on uh, roadmaps uh, instead of creating them. So it's, it's all from us. <laughs> yeah. It, just to say that it's really nice to be the creator. <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, and actually, actually, actually uh, uh, what I think we can agree with Michael and, and uh, Mariana is that let the people, let, involve people in creating a roadmap is just a great thing. Uh, obviously, uh, not everyone is capable of doing that in the full way. Anyway. Uh, we are running out of time quite a bit, uh, but there is still this uh, last topic I'd like to cover at least very quickly uh, because it's very important for me personally. So I, I'd like to hear what are your uh, opinions on this. And this is the cooperation between your partner, your um, partner from work, obviously, uh, like uh, CTO, CPO, um, uh, technical technical manager, technical director, and product director. What is your counterpart? And what is essential between you two? Please, uh, just try to cover this quickly, but um, I'd like to hear what works for you between the relationship. Yeah, let me, let me start. Because uh, one thing which, which came to my mind is, is that, uh, you know, if uh, uh, both of uh, these people uh, greatly cooperate together, then this pattern gets copied and uh, 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 towards uh, your direct reports, meaning the the developers, the the, the other product managers, et cetera. And uh, at the end, uh, it turns into the stage where uh, greatly cooperating managers uh, are leading the departments, which are greatly cooperating between themselves as well. And uh, that's, that's the bottom line I can say. 
uh, of course, I know it's it's not easy to to find your uh, your you know best counterpart, which which greatly fits to let's say your thinking process. Uh, nevertheless, it's up to really again we come back to the topic topic of great hiring. So if you if you make sure that you share the same principles and values. It really turns to, to, turns to be efficient, and of course, uh, sometimes everybody from us as a manager is doing a mistake. But uh, if you make at least 80% of your decision being right, then you're a hell of a good manager, and uh, that's the principle which should be followed. And uh, you you can forget the rest 20% basically. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Dominic. I guess in your case, uh, the, your counterpart is usually the client. Yes. Well, what is important uh, in the relationship? In in the relationship between you two? Uh, trust, uh, it's, it's really important because, you know, they trust us that uh, we will deliver, that uh, we, if, uh, especially in, uh, if we are working on agile models like time and material, when we spent, we are basically working like an internal team for, for them. Um, so yeah, trust, <laughs> trust is really, uh, uh, is crucial and yeah, and in a sense, uh, you can, it's really hard to build up and very easy to, to lose yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, for oh, us, God. it's the trust and also it's something which is, of course, important uh, in every relation, uh, in every relationship, but it's to create, you know, it's, it's not client, uh, provider, but to be like more on a partnership uh, model. So mm -hmm. that, okay, even though we are different companies, we want to work on this together. So we have to uh, cooperate the same way as we would do if we were in uh, one company. So the same, same thing. So it's also about this uh, relationship things. Okay. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, Michael? What's well, your part look like? What's the relationship between you two? Yeah, uh, I would definitely second like Dominic's point with, with the trust. It's it's really key. But uh, I would say that you know that uh, clarifying the, the expectations uh, on both sides and what are the priorities. Uh, I just said it somewhere in, uh, at the beginning of this call, but. If you know what are the expectations and, and the priorities, you can uh, you know why the, the, the person is doing what he's doing and you can understand. So accept the trust, uh, you can try to under, understand the motivation and uh, also I would say communication. Again, it was mentioned a couple of times. So get, get together as, as many times as possible and uh, become friends literally. It's not that easy uh, time to time because you are not usually choosing your counterpart to be your best friend, but but you can try to establish the relationship. Okay, for me uh, to to end this uh, end this topic, it's uh, it's about understanding each other and having the same goal. I think if you have the same goal and truly the same goal, which is usually quite difficult, then it works. Then trust, uh, transparency. Um, you need to be. I think. If you if you understand each other like friends, that really helps a lot. And then if you have a friend, then trust is natural, and transparency is natural. So so this is something that works for me. Okay, thank you guys uh, for this last topic. I guess uh, now we can move on to the Slido questions. Um, could someone? Uh, yes, exactly. Thank you very much. This is what I needed. So, good. Uh, the first question, how do you guys solve the management of the team, meaning all the usual HR routine, approval, vacations, increases, uh, et cetera? Who has the role in the team? Could you please um, quickly uh, answer this question uh, one by one? Yeah. Uh, so if, yeah. yeah, for us, the uh, approval of vacations, that's up to the up to the tech lead increases, uh, tech lead plus uh, plus uh, the manager. Uh, I don't know what's, what's, what, what else is there because it, it really depends, right? So, but uh, about approving vacations, uh, truly to say uh, one thing to, to raise is that I'm not really looking or, about uh, or checking whether a, a guy, uh, you know, uh, really is keen to or obliged to to 
for my approval. Um, I just trust, uh, uh, you know, my, my peers and my, my direct reports. And I know that if he, if somebody's require, requesting for vacation, uh, I, I'm not paying attention on that and just basically signing it off. Um, if somebody, so, something bad comes up, then uh, we can speak about it. But uh, again, that comes back to, to, to the definition of trust, right? Okay, you mentioned you mentioned that what else is in there? Uh, personally, for me, being a manager, most importantly, mean being responsible for personal development of that person. So maybe who is responsible for personal development of people in the team? Yeah, at at Muse, uh, we are doing our best for for you know the the career paths. We even have our own career paths to make sure that you know people people have a full opportunity to make that happen and with that in mind uh i would also mention that you know uh it could be great for example to to move uh, somebody from the development to the product management role right so it's not just about being an individual contributor or or somebody or, or you know uh being you know close in in your own bubble and in terms of the leadership and and, and soft skills development it's uh it's a combination of uh, HR and uh, our own uh, tech managers. In practice, for example, we are using the Plateau HQ uh, as a platform, which really helps us greatly that I would recommend everybody to give it a try. Uh, it's peanuts and it, it really helps. The, the other thing is that we also do our internal mentoring sessions. And then I have a personal sessions with people uh, which I consider to be to be the top of the top, and uh, you know, making sure that they have a, they have the right path to follow. Okay, thank you very much for the answer, Michael. Yeah, I would say basically we have it similar to to Marian, uh, like uh, approvals of vacations or sick days or whatever are uh, mm. totally like uh, in in the, in the, uh, um, like competency of of, of uh, each team lead or uh, engineering manager. Uh, regarding the increases, we have it um, uh, a little bit like more difficult because we have like uh, 360 degrees and peer-to-peer -peer reviews uh, every half of the year. Then we have a calibration process where the, all the, the, the engineering managers and directors are together in one room, like uh, talking about the, 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 the people, comparing them together, making sure that they're like uh, fair, fairly rewarded and uh, if, if the person is uh, making something special and really aspiring to be promoted uh, it's obvious from from this meeting so the outcome of this meeting is actually the list of people that will get raised or they will uh, be promoted or they will get some grant refresh because we have also option of option grants for as, as a motivation for for the people and regarding personal growth, I would also answer it. It's uh, again on, on each team lead because like engineering manager is more like a people manager. So it's, I would say that he's accountable for people uh, growing uh, and uh, shifting on their like career path. I would definitely say that Play-Doh is a great idea. We also have it. Uh, also the skip levels but with the high potential people might be a great way to uh, make sure that they, they have everything they need for their like uh, uh, growth. And uh, yeah, we have uh, we have some uh, uh, dedicated budget for every individual uh, like monthly uh, for some I don't know uh, literature course online courses or whatever. So yeah. Okay, thank you, Michael. Dominic, how about you? How does it work? Yeah, um, I would follow up uh, on Michael uh, because it's very, very similar to what he said, or that uh, the team leaders are responsible uh, for, for the growth of the people. We also have uh, the, the budgets uh, per each team uh, for conferences, uh, literature, courses, whatever. Uh, so that's uh, what we have. We also started, it's not, uh, not far back that we started with the competition profiles uh, within, within each teams. Uh, so it's again something which might help uh, with uh, directions of someone's uh, growth and yes yeah, so it's very similar to uh, what Michael said and regarding the uh, the HR routine the approval of uh, vacations uh, increases we well 
regarding the increases, it's, it's the team leader uh, who's responsible for that. And regarding the approval of vacations, it's also the tech, uh, the team leader of each uh, particular tech teams, but uh, in cooperation with, uh, with the project manager on each team, just because to be aligned that uh, the, the, mm, the one who's working and who wants to take the vacation is working on some project that the project, if there's some critical deadline, we have some backup or something like that. So it's not only on the team leaders, but also about the project, uh, project uh, managers on in this case with the approval of vacations. Okay, thanks. Uh, just for fun, I'll add that uh, we, have no, uh, we have no team leaders in Heureka, uh, which makes it a bit more difficult, but a lot more fun. Uh, but let's not, <laughs> it's not about me. So thank you, Vitek, for this great question. Let's move on to the next one from uh, Katarina. Uh, have you ever tried to give a dev team a task to increase some metrics without specifying how to do it? Um, Someone else than Marianne, you're always starting. So Michael. Okay. Okay. So yeah, definitely that, that, uh, in some cases, uh, for instance, like, um, now we have, uh, an objective, which is very like vocally defined, like, uh, focus on performance. We need to like decrease initial load from like metric X to, to metric Z. Uh, and that's completely up to engineering team to figure out how to do that. Like, um, so, so the team uh, probably would uh, came up together and like do some brainstorming and uh, uh, design some solution for that. So yeah, yeah, that we are doing that for sure for engineering things, for product things. Uh, I think that it's not that common, but uh, that's what like product managers uh, are doing with the engineering manager trying to figure out how to move with the metric. But yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know, Dominic? Yeah, I, I, can, I, I can follow. But <laughs> unfortunately, uh, what I wanted to start with was <laughs> exactly uh, what, uh, what Michael said. Yeah, it's pretty common for, for performance metrics that, okay, we need uh, to be able to take this load or, increase, uh, or shorten the, lo uh, the loading times. But I cannot actually imagine uh, Given giving a product metrics uh, just uh, to be thrown at the uh, developers, I, I'm not sure if, if we have ever done it that way. Okay, thanks, Marianne. Yeah, uh, I would just copy paste uh, what, what <laughs> the guys have said, really, because uh, you know, uh, for us, it's easy to come up with uh, with some uh, technical metrics about, let's say, decreasing the uh, incident reports amount, etc., and uh, high throughput and availability. On the other hand. As we have uh, uh, um, product manager, which are still uh, on their learning path, it's it's not that easy. And uh, you know, as usually the OKRs are done the way that uh, you know you, you want to increase, for example, the MRR or let's say the number of users or, or by twenty percent or these the sort of typical things. And the, then the OKRs are split uh, among the teams uh, the way that uh, you know. Um, you make sure that uh, they are the teams who who have the who have who really have the hard influence on 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 the outcomes, and uh, as uh, these are split into the let's say key results, uh, we are not distributing the real metrics uh, in this case. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for the answers. I'll just men I'd like just to mention that for us, uh, this is the very basic. Uh, thing behind OKRs and how OKRs work, mm -hmm. but maybe this is slightly different for us because we don't have a dev team. We actually have a product development team, which, uh, which naturally includes a product manager. So, all, so the team works on, um, on what to do on their own. So just to, just to mention, uh, thank you, Katrina, for your question. Next one, uh, uh, which is uh, now on top. Have you, uh, how to manage a relationship between the developers and non-developers, for example, for example, customer support in one company? Uh, Marianne, please yeah, start. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a good one. Um, to me, that uh, comes back, for example, uh, you mentioned a great example about, uh, let's say, uh, customer support. Um, uh, the way how uh, what I experienced, for example, was that uh, 
there was not a great relationship uh, with the support team because you know uh, the support was uh, arguing about having too too many requests about the, the you know uh, the product not not working properly or as expected. On the other hand, uh, uh, we are pushing the developers to work on the on the roadmap and not really on the uh, customer support uh, things. So. Uh, the the one thing which we actually came up with two things which i can advise the first one was to make sure that uh, for example the customer support has the uh, top 10 issues being described in a in a in a proper way to, uh, so you everybody can follow up on that and fix fix the the, the very same issue the other thing is to um, create a contract uh, what i mean by the contract could be a simple sla about uh, how many uh, support issues we can handle and to provide a certain, let's say, throughput or capacity uh, from the team to, to tackle these issues. And that greatly, greatly reduces uh, the tension between both of uh, the teams or departments, if you will, because you just uh, provide them the buffer of how much you can accomplish for, let's say, two weeks or a month or something similar to that. And uh, you just ask them, please uh, fill your top priorities for us and uh, we will make sure that we take care of, of that. And again, so if you create this sort of contract, it really uh, reduces the tension and helps, you know, to make at least some things to be accomplished. And of course, you need to make sure that you take uh, this sort of capacity into consideration when creating the roadmap. Okay, contract it is. Thank you very much. Uh, Dominic, uh, how do you manage the relationship? Uh, yeah, we, we had a specific problem between uh well as i mentioned if there was by the way is is there noise from the outside from from my mic or not uh, that's that's quite okay yeah. okay uh okay sorry sorry for that um okay so if the project managers were not that on some one particular project manager was not on the high technical level let's say and yeah uh, developers had a problem that they try to explain him why something cannot be made or you know the basic stuff which works with the other de uh, developers and it was uh, sorry with other project managers so yeah it was it was problem or when the testers was not uh, if they wasn't on the same level and with within like technical skill and how we solved it is was like okay let's sit together and act like a grown grown ups let's let's talk okay if 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 uh, you were upset that uh, the tester is giving you task you don't understand what to do just tell him that okay i don't know from this bug report what what i need to do or if you would take a look here you would uh, see that it's actually not bug from the mobile app it's from the api so let's teach it each other well the communication uh learn communicate 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 it's yeah because people tend to uh or maybe the one thing it's a known known uh known uh, sentence um uh, that's uh assume ignorance uh instead of more practice that maybe someone just didn't know what to do instead of uh hurting you or or trying to insulting you, so yeah, try try to uh, think that the other person just didn't know. It just reminded me something funny. Those uh, who has kids, uh, or I guess knows uh, knows that, uh, just re remember those situations when you're telling the kid or you're behaving like a kid, grown up, mm -hmm. but it's still a kid. So uh, <laughs> it might work with some people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Okay, so uh, I think that it's very frustrating for customer support uh, when they see that they're uh, reporting something and it's not being resolved. On the other hand, it's very frustrating for developers if uh, the customer su support is like direct messaging them all the time, hey, fix that, hey, fix that. So I think the key is to define the, uh, the right process for the bug escalation. We, we call that like bug triage. So basically when the customer support reports something, uh, it's under SLOs. So depends on the, 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 the severity, uh, there are some like uh, uh, time, uh, time scopes in which the, the, it should be resolved. 
and it, it comes like through the through the this like diagram in that bug escalation process to a responsible product manager on duty uh, who will decide uh, about the priority and also uh, assigns the, the team that will uh, that, that will solve that and if it's like p0 or p1 it should be like directly uh, resolved by the team if it's uh, less maybe it can be planned to the next sprint so we have a guideline for that we have the process for for that at, and it works uh, because customer success is satisfied with with, with, the, with this approach and so again like bring people to, together make them talk uh, like clarify the expectations this is something like uh, like Marianne said that this is kind of a contract between you know the departments that's uh, that's clearly set up and that's the way it works yeah okay thanks all right we have two questions more and some five minutes left so uh, let's answer them quite uh, quickly if I may ask you but this one is not not easy to answer. So uh, I'll, I'll see how, how, how can you manage that. Uh, developers product need to discuss and align to work on meaningful, meaningful things, but every meeting means waste of work time. How do you assess the productivity of your team? Um, I don't know who wants to start, whatever, whoever. Yeah, um, if I may. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, there is definitely something wrong if if uh, if uh, you're saying that every meeting uh, means a waste of work time. I don't think that way. In case, of course, there are companies which uh, you have to sit at specific meetings and uh, they are just a waste of time for you. In that case, just of course, uh, great people just raise their hand that they are not going to participate on that on this one because it doesn't bring any 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 value basically right i don't want to go too much into details about like having the clear agenda before etc but uh i guess what what uh Yurka wants to wants to tackle is uh how to make meetings effective and with that in mind in terms of for example uh engineering uh people or and uh, you know development teams uh, the uh, state of the art which I have seen and experienced is that uh, you don't really have uh, a sort of a prescribed meetings and of course you can you can make it work only for let's say teams which are really like um, experienced what I mean to say is that uh, for example you don't have uh, specific uh, groomings or stand-ups or, or planning meetings they just know that you know when uh, they come uh, to an end of uh, what uh, what has been agreed to work on, then they just uh, fill up the, their their queue back, uh, and they they are basically um, asking themselves to to pull things out of the backlog, right? And with that in mind, you have no explicit meetings. The only meeting which I required was was to have a retrospective at least once per month, and uh, that's about it. Uh, and of course, it's hard to get there, but. Uh, I would say if you can manage to get the grooming meetings on demand and uh, you can manage to have uh, planning meetings being done within a half an hour or even 20 minutes, uh, that's a hell of a good achievement. For example, you can ask people to come up uh, uh, to with, the pro with a proposal to the planning meeting of uh, uh, what is going to be prioritized in advance, right? And that these are the tips and tricks which really greatly help to the efficiency of the of, of these uh, yeah. you know ceremonies. Yeah. For instance, uh, we had a team uh, which did their daily stand up in a plank. Yeah. So speed <laughs> up a bit. Uh, Dominic. One uh, minute. <laughs> Dominic, uh, uh, meaningful me meaningful meetings. How do you do that? Uh, yeah. Well, we tr try to evaluate. Uh, if yeah. I believe the same way as uh, Marianne said it that if there's that I don't believe that uh, meanings are wa waste of time uh, waste, um, and there shouldn't be and if they are they should be stripped or changed somehow but uh, yeah uh, yeah I do believe that reasonable amount of meetings is beneficial and that they are not a uh, waste of work time so how we do it we measure it with satisfaction okay was it uh beneficial for everyone wasn't it okay do you want to change something do it faster and tips like marianne said 
prepare everything up front what you can so you don't spend uh, a lot of time there and being as productive as possible on the meeting itself. Okay, thanks. Michael? I would just like Quick. to make what Marianne said that if you have the right people with the right mindset, they would probably come to you saying, hey, this meeting is not great. We are not solving the right things there. We need to change that. It happened to us many times in product board. So we have redesigned the meetings and uh, you know we are constantly re-evaluating if it's not good you will get a feedback that is not good and you need to like rethink it okay thank you for the answers thank you Irko, for the question uh another one two more questions left uh, i'd like to ask this one specifically only dominic because i think it's more related uh, mostly related to your business do you see a benefit in developers meeting with clients or you leave it up to a product manager attending sales pitches? Uh, would, you, would you please answer this, Dominic? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not saying that we are doing it every time, but uh, if it makes sense for us, uh, it, it, again, depends on a, on a case. But yeah, so we like it from for several reasons. It should be a developer who would work on a project. So the client like might get an idea uh, who, who's uh, the guy behind it that we are not only you know like salesmen uh, who are going to uh, represent the company and yeah and the other thing is uh, that if there are some technical questions that uh, because they were preparing the calculations for the project they might answer it uh, up immediately uh, that why might uh, that's what I find really most beneficial because yeah I understand a, certain, a lot of technical questions but if I'm not the one who was reading the brief uh, detail and wasn't preparing the calculation I might answer it wrongly because I don't know everything so it might be uh, very beneficial in that way okay thanks uh, guys would you like to add anything or can you move on I guess let's move on the very last question here what about the source of information inspiration for you guys? Well, I, I can start like uh, for me, it's attending discussions like that, uh, even as a, as, a, as a listener or attender, like uh, reaching out uh, the, the folks on the same position, talking about the common problems. It's for me the, the, the most valuable source of information, like just to reach out your peer and talk about stuff. It can be done uh, through Play-Doh or maybe a better manager, uh, online services. And also lead, reading books and articles. I would just emphasize uh, for today's agenda, thanks for the feedback on effective collaboration. Uh, I don't know, Marty Kagan's book inspired on the, 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 the product management. It's very, it's, it's great. And also um, what comes into my mind, uh, Inspired, uh, yeah, thanks for feedback. Uh, yeah, I had the first one in, in my mind, but it doesn't matter, so, so I will maybe get to, into it. Okay, maybe later on, if someone wants to contact you, uh, I guess we'll discuss where people can reach us uh, in the very end, but thank you, Michael, for the answer. Dominic, where you get inspired? No, we don't hear you. You're muted. Yeah, you're muted. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I know, but, but my MacBook was uh, trying to uh, stop me from unmuting it. <laughs> okay. I was always getting right click. Okay. Uh, well, I just can comment. Okay. Meeting, meeting, meeting people on same position, on different position, but hearing the stories from the other companies, how they do it, uh, how they solve their issues and learning from our own mistakes and hearing what others have done. It's all about networking and listening. Great. Thanks, Maria. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's exactly why we, why we uh, are present uh, at the very same meetup, right? Right here and right now, uh, which is great to, to share the ideas, uh, our, let's say, mistakes uh, and, uh, you know, how we, how we do things exactly. Uh, truly to say, uh, I'm trying to read all the different books, but there are so many books actually with uh, the engineering management then that that I basically uh, uh, leave this sort of idea. 
what actually I do mostly and uh, would fully recommend. I will just post it uh, into the uh, chat chat section. It's uh, Marcus Balkanship, one of the, uh, I would say, top people which uh, really inspired me about how to do the engineering management properly. He's got plenty of b blogs and podcasts and uh, I really love to, to listen to them. The other thing which I highly recommend is uh, to make sure that as an engineering manager, for example, you uh, follow also the uh, evangelist from the product management side as well. And that uh, is an experience which can't be uh, paid back because uh, it really opens you the, the ways to discuss uh, all, let's say, new approaches or things or ideas with, with, uh, with, uh, with, the, with the OP, the OP or basically, right? So uh, um, there's plenty of things from medium.com uh there is a uh, uh uh correct correct uh, uh uh creamer which i follow i will just uh, post it again uh, on the on the chat channel and uh you know uh basically once again sorry to say that but i left up all the idea to read the uh, the generic uh, management how to uh, books that's that's all i can say <laughs> okay thank you very much i must agree with all of you all of, uh, all that being said uh, I add one more thing uh, that works for me and the great uh, source of inspiration for me is creative creativity of my team. If I let mm -hmm. them be creative, if I listen to them, that's just really huge, huge uh, part of uh, information, inspiration and my motivation. So that's it. Uh, I guess uh, we've covered all the questions. Thank you very much for a great discussion. I personally enjoyed it very much uh, and I guess so uh, maybe last words if you want to add something yeah um, um, thank you Lukash for for hosting us uh, uh, it was a real pleasure to have you uh, thank you all the panelists Marianne Michal and Dominic uh, regarding where they can reach you we'll be sending a follow-up email to everybody so you will get everything uh, that you need to know and where you can reach out to everyone uh, so thank you once again thank you all attendees and uh, have a good evening thank you Thank you. Bye, guys. Cheers. Bye, guys. Bye.